and we're back uh, with Factory Reset. Uh, developers, uh, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves um, because there, there's, I, I, I'm, I'm twisting to get around my screen. So uh, could, could uh, Factory Reset developers, could you tell us who you are and what your job was? Uh, yeah, I'm Raymond Dolan. I was a gameplay programmer and the lead audio engineer. I'm Henry Stadolnik. I was also a gameplay programmer and I was like the lead designer. I'm Elizabeth Kirshner and uh, I was the lead ex on the accessible design. And my name is Christian Ryan Adler and I was the lead artist. Nice. Why don't you uh, introduce and tell us about the game? Yeah, so Factory Reset is a game where you play as a robot with magnetic powers. You have magnetic hands you can push and pull objects with, and you have magnetic, magnetic feet you can use to pull yourself onto surfaces and walk along them, like reorienting the whole world. Um, you are in the Soviet punk alternate future, um, and you are trying to, you just wake up in this trash can factory, you're trying to find your way back home to your, like this, the facility where you're created. And so you have to use your magnetic powers to traverse the world and get there. Yeah, I loved the overall, like, uh, very kind of gritty Soviet cyberpunk vibes that the game had. So how did you approach, like, achieving that tone for the game, both from, like, a narrative and an art standpoint? Well, for artistically, there was a couple of different areas that we wanted to achieve, right? You know, a cyberpunk, you think of the 1980s classics, like such as Robo, uh, Robocop, and of course, um, you know, th that color palette of bright pinks and purples kind of contrasted with the dystopian feels of, you know, this, this sporadic class divided uh, world. We thought we would be interested in bringing it over into Soviet Union, which of course is kind of a little bit of a different aesthetic. Um, and by what we tried doing is kind of collaborating a mix of um, the fourth age of Soviet architecture and mixing it with a little bit more sci-fi elements, kind of bringing that, you know, perceived vision of the future from the 1980s uh, into the future. Uh, can you talk about the, you mentioned you had a um, kind of a focus on accessibility uh, for this, can you uh, talk about what your journey was like and how it uh, appears throughout the game? Right, so we um, started in the fall with um, the accessibility um, in terms we started with research. Um, I did a lot of the for forefront of that. Um, so I consulted a lot of accessibility guidelines online. Um, I went to a lot of the different groups that you see, you know, Able Gamers, the um, accessible.games, like all those, all those people. Um, and we incorporated that into our design from the beginning. Um, there's some of the easy design choices were like we made the game have sort of a single action gameplay. Like there's only one action required at a time. You don't need to use multiple mechanics. Um, and then as the game progressed, we incorporated a number of accessible features and the sort of best developed ended up being, um, you know, support for external controllers and remappable controls. Um, as well as uh, a subtitle system and um, a lot of individual settings all around that. But those were sort of the two biggest um, in, that are the most developed in the final game. So zipping around with the, uh, the magnet mechanics was a lot of fun in the game. So how did you go about uh, designing the levels around that? And what kind of challenges did you find? Because I noticed like sometimes you could zip to a wall and be sideways and sometimes you could be upside down. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a lot of the fun. <laughs> Uh, implementing that whole mechanic was definitely one of the bigger challenges in the game. The, initially, it was completely physics-based, and you would pull the thing, you get stuck on things. So we had to actually implement the whole, whole like, system to uh, actually avoid colliding with things that like safely disable collisions when you're pulling to them. Uh, but yeah, so designing the levels around it was relatively straightforward. It's just like, all right, so you have to figure out how to place things in such a way that you can find a path to like the game a lot of the game's navigation result comes down to path finding. like you're trying to figure out how to route your way through the space like looking for things you can pull to and so it was basically just finding interesting ways to arrange objects that use that and then if you get to the third level there's actually more of a puzzle component that comes the, the puzzle component comes through to structure because there's other objects you can manipulate around that you have to there's like movable platforms that you have to they, they also have like platform 
fully polarity pads on them, or you have to drop on drop from one polarity pad onto one of these movable platforms to reach an object. So nice. a lot of different. We, we tried to explore different things you can do with the hands and the feet and combine them together. Yeah, I eventually found the uh, the compass. I don't know what you would call it, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the top of the screen, very useful. Um, how far into the game's development did you add that, or was it something you planned from the very start? Um, we Yes, and it was from the very start, and also it was added very late. So the, we had this game, we had it very early on in a very early form, and then we switched to Unity HDRP. And the original way we had it implemented was with a camera stack and thing, and they just straight up didn't have that in HDRP. So we had to, so we basically scrapped it because it just wasn't feasible to put in. And then we found an alternate way to recreate it. Um, but then we were able to put it in um, like the end of C term, I believe. So like that was halfway through this semester. And one of the things that was really interesting about it is that when we at, ended up removing it from the game, we kind of wanted to see if players would like, you know, be able to understand, you know, the, the different, areas and stuff like that that they were standing on and see if it was actually a needed piece of uh, GUI. Um, and you can see in the end product that it really was necessary. Uh, so I mentioned in my intro that I'm bad at RPGs yet playing five of them. Uh, I should also add that I am terrible at puzzles. I hate them. I hate thinking. Um, uh, so that's that's a context here for the questions. Like, did you have any changes that you made based off of play testing, like anything like major um, in the design, like based off of how, like when you were designing a level, but then you see how people actually go through it. I think the most significant change you made off play testing was actually, okay, so there is largely related to the boot pulling mechanic, like the magnetic feet mechanic. Like we had, in the second level, you know, is that the city, the buildings all have like a gradient on the lights. Before that was not there, and so it was really hard for players to tell what direction things were in. So that was one change we made, like so to actually have a clear directionality vertically to the city. Because during that level, you have there's a few points you have to disengage your boots and drop down to the gravity. It was really hard to trust gravity when you couldn't tell what direction it was pointing in. Um, and then also early on, players would just really struggle with the magnetic feet mechanic, trying to pull the things and getting stuck on surfaces. So having to we had to re rework that to make it a lot more intuitive. There was one other big change too. Um, early on, we were having some issues with the discoverability of the accessibility settings. Um, so we ended up prompting players with the, the settings menu right when they open up the game. Um, and that really aided in the use and discoverability and people started actually knowing that the settings were there. So that was another thing we did. Oh, hi, sorry, too many buttons to push. Um, <laughs> Um, I just want to point out, I, I probably should have said this like 35 times over the course of the show, but all of these projects are available at showfest.wpi.edu. You can download and watch or play depending on the pro project, uh, uh, but you can play Fra Factory Reset right now if you want, um, but stick around because we've got more interviews coming. Um, I'd like to thank Isaac and Adam and uh, all of the developers of Factory Reset. Um, we're going to take a brief intermission and uh, shuffle some chairs and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> 